just between us, did you do it on purpose? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was payback and I put it just like a little bit too far ahead of him. Yeah. Just a yard ahead, just too much. Yeah, I love that. I used to do that all just, the time. Just to let him know, don't let me miss my shot again. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. That Tyler Roberts, that challenge oh my God. On, on it. Yeah. yeah. What was that like? What was? Did you speak to? The, did anyone speak to the referee and ask him what that was about? Do you know? I actually, when it happened, I don't think any of the boys thought of it as being a bad tackle because we literally thought that it was just two coming together and like bumping into each other and the ball just ricocheted. In. So mm. no, I d- I didn't notice that it like kind of jumped in with two feet. Um, oh, so none of the boys said anything to the ref about potential right. red card or what is the guy doing. It wasn't until after the game that we realised. Like that tackle was naughty and he stayed down, I think, trying to kind of cover his blushes. I mean, it was 100% a booking and then if VAR had looked at it, it was probably a red card. Yeah, it was 100% back a red. At it, yeah. yeah. But I've on ne- the pitch... I've never seen Jermaine Beckford more animated in my life as when that happened. Really? <laughs> and you, you lot know me, so that, that's saying something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you must have got white much. I was losing my rag, honestly. I almost broke the studio, all sorts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what did, what did Tyler make of it? Was he, was, was he kicking off? No, he didn't even... On the pitch, didn't say anything. So what? he was just like, as if it was um, like a 50-50. He didn't even wow. say, oh, he's gone in up against me, studs up and that. So there wasn't, on the on the pitch, there wasn't like a big fuss made of it. Wow. It was quite strange, really. I mean, I just, and, I get, and I get the the referee, if he's not seen it and he thought the same as you lot and no one's pressuring him or whatever, but what, that, isn't that the point of VAR? To just say, oh, well, I'm on ref. It went to That's... VAR, didn't it? Yeah. It did actually go, did it? Yeah. And they oh, said didn't it, even was know, a, even. it was a fair challenge or something, some ridiculous, nonsensical... Um, <laughs> description, answer, reason, whatever you want to call it, stupid, I call it. Mate, it was unbelievable. But I know for a fact, as as does everybody else, if the tables were turned, it's a straight red card, VAR not needed. Simple as that. Mm. It's mental. Absolutely mental. Yeah, that was a bad one, that. Um, I mean, obviously, Tyler's fine and they actually played it, had a fantastic game. Um, So it's it's all right, but don't want to see stuff like that, especially not getting away with it. I wanted to ask about Tyler actually because he's been playing so well recently yeah. and and he doesn't have the stats to show for it because he's not getting the assists and he's not getting the goals because of various reasons that we've talked about with VAR and he's been very unlucky and all this stuff. But he's been so good value for it. He's, he's not getting down in the dumps, is he? Because he's playing so well and his, his stats should actually be reflecting so much more than they are right now. Um, no, he's not getting down about it. I think he's enjoying his spell in the team, to be honest. And he he makes jokes about the fact that VAR is killing him. Um, <laughs> that, that if it wasn't for VAR, he'd have a, a few assists and a couple of goals. Um, but every time he brings it up, to be honest, I just have a little dig at him saying, you didn't pass to me on Saturday. Just like, kind of bring him back down to earth. Like, what, it actually happened in training today, right? We were doing a passing drill. And he's overhit the pass, so it's gone straight through to the keeper when it's my, my chance to have a shot. And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, Ty, that's exactly what you did on Saturday. Yeah. I, can hear the, I can hear the groundsman laughing and Ty's laughing his head off. Like, obviously found it funny. And um, I didn't even mean to, but the next time the ball came, like I've kicked it, I've kicked it well ahead so that he can't get it. <laughs> when, it was, when it was his shot. <laughs> and obviously then Calvin chucks his two penneth worth in and uh, <laughs> saying I did it on purpose and stuff. It, he's taking it well just, anyway. Just between us, did you do it on purpose? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was payback and I put it just like a little bit too far ahead of him. Just a yard ahead, just too much. Yeah, I love that. I used to do that all just, the time. Just to let him know, don't let me miss my shot again. <laughs> Listening on together. And Patrick, Jack Harrison, of course, scored his seventh goal of the season. And he mentioned after the game about um, using a sports psychologist to help him improve. Is that something that all of you are doing at the minute? I don't know about um, everyone in the team. I think, to be honest, I didn't even know Jack did it. Certain people, I think it's one of them things that you keep kind of close to yourself. Like I've had one since, since I was probably like 22, so five years. And it's one of them where it's something you do away from the club. So you'd work with him personally on different things that are specific to you. So I think that 
if there is any I think actually Tyler has one or Tyler uses one um, but I'm not sure about too many of the others if they do or not so it isn't something that the club implements they don't say we recommend you have one or anything they just say it's up to you yeah yeah it's something you have to do off your own back yeah and um, I'm quite fascinated by it. I feel like this could be a podcast all in itself and it depends on yeah. how much you want to divulge. But how much of it, because you said it's like personal to you, how much of it is about um, relating your like things in your personal life or what's going on to on the pitch? Or is it just solely your mindset on the pitch? Um, oh, it might differ with different people. Like for me, for instance, I'll speak to him. Um, it's called David. I speak to him like when I'm driving to the hotel or to the stadium the day before the game. I'll speak to him on the car on the way there, just like have a chat, he'll ask me how my week was and stuff. And that will kind of just, I think for him, that gives him a feeling of how I've been feeling throughout the week. And then I'll speak to him again, just before we go down for our last meeting, before we leave to the stadium on the day of the game. And that's kind of like just empty in your mind and certain things that you're working on in the game, like visualization and stuff like that is... Uh, it differs from game to game, really, but it depends how your week's been. It's fascinating. It, is it something you ever used, Jermaine? Um, while I was playing, do you know what? Not in a professional sense of the mat- uh, of the, the word, the phrase, but I used to speak to my, my family, my brothers. I used to speak to my, my dad and my mum. And so I used to get that, similar to what Patrick's saying there, I used to get everything from them. So it's almost like dumping your your concerns of the game, your your worries about the game, and then just reinforcing the positive sides of it and, and yeah. letting hearing it from a different person, different people who are not necessarily within the football industry, the football world, that you're on the right track, that you're doing the right things, that you are good enough, that you can score, that you're uh, going to win the game, etc. So in terms of an actual um, psychologist, no, but I did have people that I could lean on. I'll be honest with you, I would use somebody else's weakness for my benefit if it's um, a player in my position. If I'm not playing and I, I need to get in that team, I want to play. Because I'm a, I'm a striker, we love to play football, we love to score goals. That's, that's what we do. So if I know there's something I can use or I can, I can kind of make it work in my favour, then I, I, I would use it. And I would expect my, my strike partner to do the same thing, even though we are super close together and we're, we're, we're fighting for the same thing. I want to be the first name on the sheet rather than the 12th name, you know? And, and that's just, mm. that was the incredible point I was making. <laughs> but you wouldn't like, uh, you wouldn't like run off to the gaffer and be like, oh, he's just told me he's feeling a yeah. bit tired this week. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, what, what I'll do, I'd write a, a note on a stick it, on a post-it note and leave it on his door. <laughs> I'm oh, joking. Anonymous. 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 <laughs> Anonymous. Same handwriting every time. Left hand. Yeah. <laughs> right here with your left hand. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. But I would. I would drop subtle little hints. Oh, is he? Has he? Has he been sleeping all right? That kind of thing. You know, he just looks a little bit worn out. Wow. He must have worked. He must have worked hard earlier on in the week because today he was a bit off it, wasn't oh, he? Nice. You know that that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's a real team game. Yeah. <laughs> it's a team. Listen, when we're on that pitch, when we're in the stadium, it's a team game, one hundred percent. But up until that point, everybody's got a point to prove, and everybody wants to start. Everybody wants to be in that first eleven. Well, yeah. Maybe that's why it is so important that you have people or psychologists and those mm. people to brain dump on basically outside yeah. of it if you I, you know I actually if there think, is a feeling I actually think that sorry I think that the um, sports psychi- psychiatrist or psychologist whatever, psychologist um, helps more when you're not playing like I found mm-hmm. with me especially that I lent on him more when I was going through times in my career when I wasn't playing and to kind of just keep you working hard and keep you like little things like setting little goals or just keep your head on track when things weren't going the way you wanted them to. Um, I mean, it's easy when, it's easy kind of to go along when things are going well, but it's like when you're in, down in the dumps, you sometimes need someone. All Leeds, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. I still put pressure on myself to hit, score a goal. If I don't score a goal, even in the Premier League, if I haven't scored one week, I'm fuming. So... Mm. I'm still putting pressure on myself to score and I know that 
whilst the manager's not one to say he has to score and putting pressure on me to score, he's kind of pushing me to keep improving. So there's always that, there's the pressure from the coaches and the manager to keep improving and getting better. And that's for, for every player. And then there's like the stuff that I put on myself, which is oh, I want to score. And then like, it sounds daft. Like, I wouldn't have thought at the start of the season, but see Harry Kane hit, reach 19 goals. I'm like starting to panic thinking, it's like five goals more now. Like I'm going to have to start <laughs> pulling my finger out of it. So I just, <laughs> there's different types yeah. of pressure. Uh, with, with that in mind, Pat, and I don't, I mm. don't want to be too negative, but I'm just interested in your opinion. Yeah. And I don't want to say, I don't, I don't want to say that it went wrong because it didn't go wrong. But what do you think happened um, at the weekend against Sheffield United for yourself? I mean, did they, did they, did they focus heavily on you? Were they marking you out? Like what, what was it? Um, I'm not sure because I, d- during the game, I thought, oh, do you know what? I've, maybe I haven't put, like, I haven't run around enough. I haven't made enough movements to get on the ball. Um, but I looked at the stats and my stats were actually like really high up there with some of the ones I've done this year. So I thought maybe it was just one of them where sometimes you have games as strikers where the ball goes everywhere but to you. And it feels mm. like no, it feels like no one's giving you the ball, and, and that's not the case. It's just that it seems to be dropping for everyone else, or you're providing, you're linking up, and then you're struggling to get to the finishing part of the play. And I think it was just one of them games, and if that had been last year or the year before, I'd have been still kind of fuming about it today and like dwelling on it a lot and kind of thinking, oh, pressure's really, really on, like putting unnecessary pressure on myself for the next game. Whereas I've kind of learned this year that. I've had games like that before and I felt bad the day after and been a bit like annoyed with myself with how I've played. But I kind of just taught myself to just sweep it under the rug. I know we're talking about it now, but in terms of like the ill feeling towards it or the negative yeah. feeling towards it, just sweep that away and like go to the next game. Does Bielsa's attitude change, Patrick, depending on the result or how you played? Or is he uh, just very level? If we lose a game... Or sometimes if we draw, but definitely if we lose, there'll be a chat in the changing room after. Um, How long does that last? It'll be <laughs> probably five minutes. It's not a long chat. It'll just oh, okay. say what, what he thought that if we gave everything or just like a kind of very small debrief. Yeah. And he'll walk up and down and he'll probably like pat everyone on the head. Um, if we oh, win, I love that man. whether or not, <laughs> even if we don't play well, but we win he will be buzzing and he will like high five everyone like come over to everyone who sat down and like shake their hand and like thank all the physios and thank everybody um and he'll just be really happy that we've won um then the kind of actual debrief of where we can improve and what we've done wrong and what we can do better will happen during the week but i think yeah. that he's put the amount of energy that goes into just winning the game it's kind of like a relief for him when we do does and he absolutely does- ham- hammer you lot as well like if you if you've won but you've played badly, does he shake everybody's hands on like you played on the Tuesday and then on the Thursday does he shake everyone's hands except the one that's not had a good game? He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you played well, you played well, you not not so well. I'll come back to you in a minute and then carry on moving down the line. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. <laughs> 